First, I want to talk about why fiscal data are important to the ECB. Then I would like to uh, say that in particular high frequency fiscal data that are timely and reliable are important to us. Then I would like to explain how uh, pu public sector accounting standards on an accrual basis fit in. And then I would like to focus in particular on our view on EPSAS. Uh, fiscal data are important to the ECB because there is an interdependence between fiscal and monetary policy. Governments influence aggregate demand through uh, government expenditure and thereby influence the general price level. Governments also directly influence prices through uh, their value-added taxes. Um, they influence disposable incomes uh, through direct taxes or household benefits and thereby also uh, influencing uh, demand and then again the price level and government's non-market output influences GDP. So because of this interdependence between fiscal policy and uh, the general price level, the ECB is interested in fiscal data. Another reason why we're inter interested in fiscal data is because of the interdependence between financial stability and uh, government debt. As soon as there is doubt that governments will not honor their commitments, uh, this, uh, yeah, we've seen this uh, quite often recently, uh, this is very bad for the situation on the financial markets. And then we may be asked uh, to, to step in. So uh, what we do in, in the Government Finance Statistics Unit is that we use the fiscal data to provide timely information to our decision-making bodies. That is the governing council and the exec executive board so that they are up to date on uh, the fiscal developments in the member states. Uh, we also use fiscal data as a input for colleagues who compile the so-called euro area accounts. Uh, this is a complete and consistent set of quarterly data for all sectors of the economy. And uh, these uh, statistics are compiled together with colleagues of Eurostat, and they basically show how the different sectors of the economy interact, how government and the other sectors of the economy interact. And these statistics, we try to also um, prepare them on time for our governing council deliberations. But we do not only at the ECB provide information to decision-making bodies, uh, we also uh, support the assessment of fiscal data. And the assessment of fiscal data is done by my colleagues in the Fiscal Policies Division. And they uh, write these assessments down, for instance, in the convergence reports, in monthly bulletin articles, but also uh, in internal publications in the ESCB. Now, the focus of the excessive deficit procedure is on annual data, and at the ECB, we collect annual data through a legal instrument we call the ECB Guideline on Government Finance Statistics. Uh, we collect, uh, in particular, data on deficit, revenue expenditure, debt, breakdowns of debt, and um, the euro area NCBs are the ones that are legally obliged to send us these information, uh, this information, but in practice the non-euro area NCBs also comply with this legal instrument. Uh, now when I started at the ECB, that was in 2003, um, the focus was still very much on annual data, but in the course of time the focus has have sh have shifted more and more to quarterly fiscal data. And currently, receive, we receive quarterly uh, revenue expenditure and deficit data from Eurostat. And we receive quarterly financial accounts and quarterly debt data from the national central banks and the national statistical institutes. And these quarterly uh, fiscal data have become particularly important to assess the plausibility of forecasts for the current year and also to assess whether uh, targets for program countries can be met. So from our point of view, it's very important that these quarterly fiscal data are delivered on a timely basis and that they are reliable, so not subject to frequent revisions. Uh, as already mentioned, uh, annual and quarterly fiscal data are based on the European system of accounts. And as you know, a key feature of the European system of accounts is that they are recorded on an accrual basis. Uh, this is the reason why, uh, in our 2011 opinion on the six-pack, we thought it was important 
that public accounting systems on an accrual basis are implemented to simultaneously enhance the timeliness and reliability of general government accounts. Uh, if you have public accounting systems on an accrual basis, that means that your input for the annual and quarterly uh, fiscal data is done on the same basis, and therefore that it may be uh, that these uh, outputs can be generated faster and with a higher degree of liability, reliability. Now I would like to focus on EPSOS in particular. Um, Alexander has already mentioned a lot of uh, advantages of EPSAS, and I also think the Eurostat report makes a very convincing case for the introduction of EPSAS. I would like to highlight the features that are particularly appealing to me as a, as a data user. Uh, well, first, not only that they are on an accrual basis, but the intention is also to develop EPSAS that have a certain measure of consistency with the ESA principles. And I think this would make it easier for statisticians to translate public sector accounts into ESA-compliant fiscal data. And I also hope that that would increase the timeliness and the reliability of fiscal data. Another very appealing feature to me is that it's not only harmonized for all countries, but also for all government entities. Um, this will make it easier to check whether the source data are correctly translated um, into fiscal data in all countries and for all government levels. So we hope this will improve the reliability of fiscal data for, for instance, local and regional governments. So my overall conclusion is that uh, creating and implementing EPSOS would be a major milestone which is expected to increase the timeliness and reliability of fiscal data. And I would, and I would like to uh, uh, wish the Commission a lot of success with this project. Thank you very much for your attention.